Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Media Boat Podcast. It is November the 18th, 2020. And if you don't know what the Media Boat Podcast is, let me tell you about it. Folks, the Media Boat Podcast is your one number one source. Well, maybe not everyone's number one source, but certainly my number one source for news about news and thoughts about movies, television, video games, and music. This is episode number 254. My name is Matt. His name is Mike. I'm Mike. He's Matt. 254 episodes down in the tank, plus <laughs> specials somewhere. So we're yeah, in our really at like 310-ish. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. in our yeah. in our podcast yeah. tank that we keep in our in our um, in our yard, just throwing them in there when we're done. We're just like filling it up with podcasts. It's gonna burst someday. It's all there archived for your listening pleasure. Yes, we'll tell you all about and that. And some viewing pleasure. A little later. Yes, viewing, listening, however you like to enjoy the Media Boat podcast. But thank you for joining us. And we are happy to present you with another podcast to enjoy today. We always start the podcast with movies. And we usually start with uh, the box office, but there's no box office. So we're going to skip there right past no that. box office. And talk about movie news and we got but, movie news so hot but that it broke a, right before we recorded what were yes, you saying uh, real quickly there is a movie coming out this week okay you're interested no it stars jackie chan and it's called vanguard <laughs> okay vanguard but yeah so that's the only new release it's a movie it's a movie you know what else is a movie something that warner brothers has been um purportedly going to be releasing sometime this year in proper theaters. Well, that's still kind of the case, but now it's a little opened up to more opportunities in its release. And I am, of course, talking about Warner Brothers is, 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 is Wonder Woman 1984. We've talked about it a few times on the podcast lately about Warner's plans about whether or not it was going to push it back, whether it was going to try other release strategies or just straight up release it in the movie theater. Right. This was the last film of the holiday slate to still keep its Christmas yes. release date. She's Everything else got standing. out of the way. Uh, yeah. Everybody else got out of the way, but Wonder Woman's also getting out of the way and into your streaming library because the big announcement was that Warner is going to all but give up on a traditional theatrical release and will instead release in whatever theaters are open on Christmas. And then of course on HBO Max, their streaming service, that same day of release. Wait, so I could either spend $20 going to a theater and wear a mask the whole time. Or I can watch it in the comfort of my home for pennies on the dollar, whatever. It's true. For the, the price you already are paying on HBO Max. Right. Because uh, so, uh, we assume you already have HBO Max or it comes with your cable subscription. Yes. So uh, we talked about a story about this a few weeks ago. And we mentioned that there was going to be some earnings calls uh, coming up regarding the future of these projects. And sure enough, that did occur. And uh, Warner's really focusing on growing the number of HBO Max customers. And well, if it means giving up on potential box office ticket sales, Wonder Woman 1984 is a perfect Trojan horse. And keeping some semblance of a theatrical release on, the, on Christmas day uh, provides some comfort for cinemas who are actually open, uh, whether domestically or internationally. So yeah, that's important right there. International is important here. These superhero movies traditionally do well internationally, and there are plenty of countries out there that are not locked down or quarantined that will be able to go and have a big release day for this film. Right. So, we have talked about Europe closing down in Spain, France, uh, Italy, and I think the UK now. Yes, the UK is part back, of the EU. back locked down now. Um, just like we are, more or less, uh, right. depending on where you live. <laughs> I think what we're seeing this week is kind of a wave of, of different regulations popping back up in certain states. In here in California, we had Governor Newsom uh, move everybody back to purple, uh, at least here in Orange County and LA County. Um, so yeah, it's, it's the second wave that everybody knew was happening. 
happening now. Almost as if we knew this would happen. Yeah, almost as if we knew this, this was going to be the case the whole time. But hey, who listens to the scientists? Right, but I think <laughs> this is a brilliant move by uh, Warner Brothers and Time Warner to get people to sign up to HBO Max, as we have reported on that their numbers severely lag behind that of Disney Plus, which just hit its one year anniversary. And I yes. think I saw its numbers at 75 million, which is 300% where they expect it to be or where they hoped to be in a one year time. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, they definitely need something to boost people to go to HBO Max. And if you're going to get people to basically sign up essentially for the first time HBO Max on Christmas Day, that's $10, I think they're running at, right? Um, yes, I think you're right. It actually might be 13 Right. But see, those that ticket price that you would pay for Wonder Woman is a subscription price that you have to pay every single month instead of a one-time ticket. Right. So it's a good move. Smart it, it, business move. Theoretically, if this theoretically. brings in the people that they need it to bring in. If it just caters to the existing customers of HBO Max, then it's failed its mission. They need to expand the user base, not just cater to those who already are subscribers. Right. They need to blow up that user base. They need to pump up those numbers. But if they have a movie that's going to do it, it's this and what? Fantastic Beasts? Like, that's all they've got. So, um, well... Yeah, but Christopher Nolan kind of kept that from being the case. Right. So, But this also does lead into the recent trailer of uh, Justice League, the Snyder Cut, which will keep people yeah. subscribed as that slowly rolls out episodically in 2021. Yes. Oh boy, are we waiting at, on edge of our seat for that, right? Anyway. Um, let's move on to our second story. Why don't we? Let's move from Warner's over to Paramount, where one of their big temples uh, has that we thought maybe had a questionable future now has not only a new installment but a new director. Let's talk about Transformers. So, do we have to talk about Transformers? Because <laughs> I assume Michael Bay blew up Transformers. Michael Bay, Both literally and physically. <laughs> Michael Bay blows up a lot of things, but he didn't blow up the franchise, I guess not yet, because Paramount still has hope that their next one uh, will be even better. Paramount Pictures and Hasbro Studios have set up Stephen Capel Jr., the director of Creed II, to direct the new Transformers movie in a reinvented universe. Following the release of 2017's Transformers The Last Night, Director Michael Bay parted ways with the series to focus on new original material. After that, the studio decided to do a full revamp of the property, starting with a writer's room that would develop multiple ways to pursue a new film, leading to 2018's Bumblebee, which was actually um, received with a lot of critical praise. Uh, Joby Harold's uh, screenplay, he wrote King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Everybody remembers that movie, right? Right. Right? Right. Uh, um, he was also a producer on that and a producer on the uh, Robin Hood film. Yes. Uh, well, his screenplay on the next installment is complete with his final touches on the script given at the end of the summer. So get ready. More Transformers. Are we excited? Maybe. Who's going to be the new human lead character that we all fawned over? Uh... Tom Holland. And no. why is it sexiest man alive, Michael B. Jordan? <laughs> you were try I knew that in your head you were gonna try to get like put that in somewhere in this podcast. I don't know where you were gonna put it in. Well, um, uh, Steve Cable Jr. did work with him on Creed too. Yes, that's and true. He, we did Michael B. Creed Jordan too. likes working with mm -hmm. the same directors. Yeah, I mean, I could see, I could see it. Uh, if he has time to be in a Transformers movie, I could see Michael P. Jordan in a Transformers movie. Why not? I mean, it's a good draw if you can add him to it. If we're talking about people on magazine covers this week, then yeah, Michael P. Jordan should be with Zendaya and they should both do it. Uh, I would watch that Transformers. That would be a really good Transformers. I don't care really what else you have in there. Yeah, you, you could just you're have them like, talking you're just like, to hey, each other. These two are in it. Come yeah. buy tickets. <laughs> That's, hey, it would work for me. All righty. Well, 
You have a third story here. Do you uh, intend yeah, on well, me reading it? No, uh, because <laughs> the Wonder Woman story was so late breaking that I needed to put that in here now. But the last story is that the Gotham Awards, the usually first award season uh, to kick off award season, will take place on January 11th instead of the Monday after Thanksgiving. But it kind of snowballed because, well, one, COVID, so there's going to be a remote ceremony. Uh Two, all the nominees uh, for Best Pictures are directed by women. Interesting. And third one, tangentially, um, Chadwick Boseman could get a posthumous Oscar Mm. uh, with his uh, portrayal in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, where he co-stars with uh, Viola Davis. Well, I guess we'll find out. I mean, these, like you said, are typically a harbinger of what's to come in award season. So, uh, Right. I mean, last year we saw Noah Baumbach's Marriage Story Mm-hmm. come out of Gotham Awards as the winner and then an early front runner for the Oscars and Adam Driver won an Oscar for his performance in there. That is true. So there is some credence to the Gotham Awards and how you can ride that wave to an Oscar award. Well, All the way to the Oscar Academy wave. Awards. Yep. Did you watch any movies? Do you have any thoughts about any films released in 2020 today? Mm, no me Sorry. neither which means I, i'm slacking on movies yeah, it's to okay watch. it's 2020 the to watch have not come out movies. exactly right uh let's move past movies then and talk about tv and we always start our television section with the sports corner sports happened sports continue to happen i should say sports are literally on tv right now Sports are happening on television. Turn on a television near you and you might see sports on it. However, if you're in the Ivy League colleges, well, maybe you won't see sports pretty soon here because they have canceled their winter sports. Uh, This is no surprise because the Ivy League was the first to come out to cancel fall sports. (laughs) And now they're the first to cancel winter sports as well. Consistent. If they're anything, they are consistent. (laughs) Unlike the Pac-12. Yes, unlike everybody else who changed their mind. Uh, Let's move on to baseball. We have MVPs. Everybody loves an MVP. Uh, In this case, the American League MVP is White Sox's Jose Abreu. And the National League MVP is the Braves' Freddie Freeman. Ooh, cute all Dodger fans over here. Because yeah, Mookie but... Betts or Corey Seager should have won from the Dodgers. Yeah, but hey, it's a weird year. Weird year, you get weird stats with only 60 games. That's all you got to choose from. So it's weird. Yep. So you have like these, yeah. if you get on, so basically if you got a hot streak early in the season and it didn't t- taper off by the end, you kind of won it. There was no like <laughs> surging and then cooling off and then resurging. Yep. Also in baseball, the league has its first female general manager. The Marlins have hired one. Um, I'm going to attempt on pronouncing her name. Kim. I, I don't know. You just... As you would say it. That can't be. That is it. Mm. Eng. Mm. Eng. You say the N. Oh. Eng. Mm. Kim Eng. Okay. Uh, she is hired as the first, not only the first uh, female GM in baseball, but the first female GM in all sports history. Uh, At least the big four. Yeah, in, in America, yeah, that we know of. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a big deal. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, not only is she the uh, she the G general manager, I believe their president is also a woman, and the owner 
is former shortstop Derek Jeter. Right. So the next step here is, of course, uh, maybe let some women play the game. Maybe in baseball. Maybe why not? Uh, well, I think we should start with a league of their own. Yeah. <laughs> and go from there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move from baseball into uh, college football, which we mentioned briefly earlier, as it's Heisman season. The finalists were announced on, are going to be announced, I should say, on December the 12th, and the trophy will be awarded January 5th during a virtual ceremony. So we'll have our first virtual Heisman. Yes. Uh, they're not going to Radio City Music Hall. There's no big ceremony. It's just all done virtually. There you go. Any uh, idea about who's uh, who's a front runner here? Uh, Mr. COVID himself, Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> yeah, that's a title. I'm sure he's going to want to stick around. I mean, I don't know. It's football. Yeah, it's college. Pick football. a running back from Alabama or LSU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's safe. That's probably pretty safe. Next up in golf, we mentioned that the Masters were happening, and sure enough, Dustin Johnson has won the Masters this year. Any relation? No, not no. that I know of, no. So he won with in a minus 20 round, or, after, or four rounds. One, two, three, four, yeah. So he shot uh, 20 under par, which ties the course record. Had he birdied on the last hole, um, he would have had the course record at 21 under par. Wow. It's impressive. But fucked up. Yeah. Do you really call that fucking up though? I think that sounds like he did a pretty good job. I mean, <laughs> when you have a couple bogeys in there, sure. At some point you did fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> well, come on. You try, yeah. you, you golf better than that. You try, you try golfing. Oh, I would love that. to go play on that course. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see you try. Uh, All let, right. let me, let me first try and shoot under par at a par three. And <laughs> right. Then I'll get back to you. <laughs> yeah. Let me know. All right. Moving on to basketball. The NBA draft is tonight. Yeah, Anthony it Edwards. Is like literally right now they're doing the draft pre-show. Mm -hmm. uh begins in about seven ten minutes here got it anthony edwards not that anthony edwards is projected to be your number one pick tonight first five picks um belong to the timberwolves the warriors the hornets the bulls and the cavaliers so there was a twitter post article vanity fair article was it a tweet or a fleet no it was i think it was an espn <laughs> interview somewhere Anthony Edwards did a uh, interview <laughs> leading up to the NBA draft mm -hmm. and he tried to downplay his stock mm -hmm. saying that he did really have an affinity to continue playing basketball that if anyone in the NFL wanted to give him a <laughs> shot at a receiver or tight end spot that he would go and try out for them. That sounds like a man shooting his shot. Like this is him taking a big swing and being like, hey, hey, NFL, if you want to pay me millions of dollars, I'll come over to you while I'm on the stage dancing for you. Hey, what about you guys? Right, but I think this is his shot of trying to downplay his stock so he doesn't get stuck in the Timberwolves and probably <laughs> gets bumped over to either the Warriors, the Bulls, or the Cavs. Yeah, even more lucrative Knicks. franchises that people care about. Perhaps. Right, and not get stuck in Minnesota there in the winter time. Yeah, I just, I certainly wouldn't want to play for a Minnesota team. That's for sure. All right. And lastly, speaking of basketball, yes. they released their schedule, um, or at least part of their schedule. Okay. Um, so as we noted that it's going to be a 72-game season, down from its 82-game season. The start date will be December 23rd. 22nd which is the tuesday before christmas so we'll still mm -hmm. get christmas games but they only released half of the schedule and they're saving the other half in case they have to do a covid bubble uh -huh. and in case they need to shuffle things around because players tested positive or they had to 
postpone some games and do some reshuffling. That makes sense. That's smart. That's smart. Planning ahead. They're giving themselves an out halfway yeah. through the season. So it's smart. Yeah. They're doing this half league schedule. I mean, hey, they tr- proved last season, like we talked about last week, they proved last season that this works. They proved that they could have a safe season of, base, of basketball. And I don't blame them for having everything figured out, all these little, little bits and pieces, because that's why they did so well the last time. Right. And speaking of tournaments, the NCAA March Madness Tournament mm-hmm. is looking into doing a bubble similar to the NBA, mm-hmm. but not in Florida. They're looking at doing it in Indiana, the mm. Hoosier State and home of basketball. Interesting. Okay. That makes sense. But we won't know about that until next year. Yes, that's a 2021 problem to solve. Yes. But they're trying to solve it right now, or at least plan for it. Yeah. Anything else in sports before we move on to television news proper? Drew Brees got a, I'm sorry, media boat favorite, <laughs> Brew Drees. Brew Drees, my favorite football player, yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> punctured lung. Oh, no. And six cracked ribs. Yikes. Out. Yeah, I bet. I, he should not play the sport of football with that. Uh, he's condition. also pretty old, so who knows if mm-hmm. he is going to play football ever again. Yeah. Yikes. Well, wouldn't want to I mean, be a Saints fan right now. But this might be his last season looking like it. Uh but yeah. Yeah. Devastated to my fantasy team. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I guess here's wishing uh, Drew Brees an eventual recovery, but yeah, you're probably right about his career though. Yep. Um, that's all I got for sports. Well, I certainly don't have anything, so that's it for the sports corner. Let's talk about television news. Are you looking at the sports corner? Or are you looking at the sports that's happening on the television? I'm looking at the sports that's happening on the television. Um, <laughs> Nothing to report? Showing LaMelo Ball. Okay. Because he's also <laughs> potentially being drafted. I hear he's never lost. Uh, not on state side. <laughs> <laughs> but they did ask him if he would rather play in the D League or in Australia. And he mm-hmm. said he would go to Australia to play professional basketball there okay instead of in the d league of the nba should i should i actually watch this week's snl so that way i could cross my fingers that keenan does the lamello ball does the lamello ball <laughs> depending on what happens over the next like 24 hours probably <laughs> <laughs> we will see all right let's stop talking about uh SNL and Keenan and let's talk about (laughs) former uh, SNL uh, writing staff member Conan O'Brien no he's a former Simpson writing staff he did both turns out in the early 90s Uh, he was uh, kind of a writer for hire there for a while but of course we mostly know um, Conan O'Brien as the host of a long running uh, late night program the kind of was on network Yep, he was on te- network TV for a while, was almost the guy after uh, Jay Leno, but you, you know what happened. We don't need to go into that history. Then afterwards, uh, ended up on cable, where he's hosted uh, for 10 years on TBS. Well, after 28 years of late night television, he's finally going away. He's ending his late night run with the season 10 finale of his current incarnation of The Conan Show on TBS, ending in June 2021. Beginning in 2021, O'Brien will, though, get his own weekly variety series for HBO Max. He will also continue his travel specials, Conan Without Borders, with crew member Jordan Schlansky. As we talked about on this very podcast, last year, TBS made a move to reduce the hour-long Conan show down to a less structured half-hour show that gave Conan a little bit more flexibility with what he wanted to do on the show. So we're already kind of in a trajectory of him trying new things and kind of experimenting and maybe lessening the actual talk show element of his talk show. So this doesn't come as a surprise to me that he's giving up the nightly format and moving to a streaming show that will allow even more freedom for him to experiment and try whatever he wants. 
not only that, it kind of also eliminates the weekly element mm -hmm. and the talk show element <laughs> to literally allow him to do whatever he wants. Right. Whenever you want a guest to talk, sure, yeah. do that. You want to do a whole video game half hour segment? Sure, go right ahead. You want to so stop random people on the streets? You want to go <laughs> to a rally? You want to go to the White House? Do it. Yeah, I mean, he certainly earned it. I mean, 28 years, just looking at that number, 28 years, I mean, second only to Johnny Carson at that point. Johnny Carson, you know, had, had like the 30 year tenure. Like Conan was almost there with nights of hosting a show in late night television in some sort of capacity. And so that's a pretty impressive run. The man clearly has no sh has shown no signs of stopping either. So I'm excited to see what he does with this new platform, new format, and more freedom. He is the Brett Favre of late night. <laughs> yeah, he's always advertising those Wrangler jeans. I just don't <laughs> they don't even look that great on him, but he does it anyway. He's like a really tall guy, so they don't they always get the size right for him. But nothing more of the copper fit. Mm. Mm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it, it's how he runs his shows anyway anyways our second story is actually multiple stories because i am proud to present tv bits the bits the, the bits. bits the television bits. style here's a cavalcade of stories for you starting with david fincher has signed a four-year deal with netflix following the release of his film mank which is his first film since Gone Girl back in 2014. Of course, David Fincher, highly respected, uh, critically acclaimed uh, director. Uh, so signing to Netflix uh, follows in the footsteps of people like, I don't know, Martin Scorsese, who have made Oscar nominated films for Netflix in the past. So here we are. Fincher had a deal prior with Mindhunters. Mm -hmm. And so that's how Bank came about. And so he's now there for another four years. I mean, I don't blame him. Uh, like we've been reporting on this podcast for the last handful of years is that creative talent uh, is getting poached by Netflix. Mm -hmm. So that way Netflix can keep churning out these uh, critically acclaimed uh, movies and television series. And it's working. I mean, yep. every year- I will probably be checking out Manx when it becomes available. Mm -hmm. And that will be the first film I've seen since Tenet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, our, our end-of-the-year list for movies is not going to be probably in the same format as the other three categories, the, I think. We might not have the best films. We might just say... But we will have films yes, to talk about. We might just about. have, like, let's just talk about films we watched this year because there's so few of them. That might be five. <laughs> but we'll see. We'll, we'll get back to that we'll in December. Uh, but for now, moving on to the television bits... Matthew Perry has confirmed a Friends reunion, which has all been, all been confirmed by other people as well, coming in March 2021. So everybody will finally get the thing they waited for forever. The Friends will be reunited. Um, uh, speaking of being reu reunion shows, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion mm -hmm. on HBO Max. I also, also saw that announced. on Twitter today, yes. So it's happening. Re, uh, the 90s never ended. We are uh, we're circling seeing, back. Yeah, we're circling back to all those shows. Everything you loved, question mark, everything is going to come back. Everything you watched, everything you endured. Anyway, next up in the bits, WandaVision, the upcoming Marvel uh, produced Disney Plus series starring, of course, Wanda and Vision. See, see, see the title? Yep. Makes you sense. just mashed two words together. <laughs> I sure did. Finally, has a release date. It is January 15th, 2021. So then you can get all your WandaVision uh, in. Did they mention that if it's going to be a weekly show a la The Mandalorian or not? I believe it will be a weekly show a la The okay. Mandalorian. That's smart. Um, I was hoping. I believe this also case. means it jumps Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yes. On Netflix, and it also jumps Disney the Plus. Black Widow yeah. film as well. Yeah, so it will be the first of the Marvel content in 2021. A lot of reshuffling going on there. Yes. Next up, something that's uh, close to you. Yes. As a fan of this show, The Good Doctor. Uh, one of their stars, Richard Schiff, has been hospitalized with COVID-19. 
which they had just aired their season premiere to two parter, which dealt with actual doctor stories dealing with COVID nineteen. Right. So, um, so do they somehow write and a reason for him to depart the show? No, not yet. Um, they it was just the first two episodes that they dedicated to the hospital workers. Mm-hmm. Beginning with the third episode, they went. They basically did a forward of eventually in the future when this is done, this is how the series will progress. Okay. So they kind of just skipped all the COVID stories. Yeah, they pretended that it was over was. and like, eh, let's go back to normal. Well, because it was like, this is, we would just show you this every single week, but then that would be too depressing for our show. So let's <laughs> fast forward a year. Yeah. Uh, but he is one of the older characters. Uh, he was the former president of the hospital. Mm-hmm. and a mentor to Sean or to um, Freddie Heimer's character. Mm-hmm. So it is possible to write him off the show. It will be really sad if they use this actual yeah. uh, scenario. But there is room for him to be like, a, he's not a major player, at least not anymore. Like the first season he definitely was. Mm-hmm. And slowly transitioned out between two and three. Well, we'll see. I'm sure they'll be smart about it. I'm sure they'll figure out some way to graciously remove him, and then maybe, hopefully, someday put him back. But um, he's so. not dead yet, so right. That's key. That's key. Yes. All right. Next up in the bits, another one of your favorites. Uh, Big Mouth is getting a season four debut on Netflix on December fourth. So more Big Mouth forthcoming. Just in time for the holiday season. Yeah, that's what I want to see around the tree. Those terrible, terrible character designs. (laughs) Next up, HBO Max. In case you were a holdout, well, it's just been added to two new devices. If you're an Amazon Fire TV or Fire tablet owner, you can finally now download the HBO Max app and start a watching. Or you can gift it uh, as part of your access codes to people who probably don't have it yet. Yeah, you could. And then lastly in the bits, Hulu has joined with Netflix, which we reported last week, in raising their prices. And Hulu is going to go up by, you, that can't not be true. You have $10. Up, up by $10. You mean two ten dollars No, they're increasing their live package $10. Oh. Okay, you, Sorry, you just I, I have, have Hulu. There. You just have Hulu. You need to say Hulu Live. <laughs> yeah, it's Hulu and Hulu Live. Okay, so the live TV package is going up another ten dollars, which actually that will be parity with YouTube TV, I believe. Believe. Oh yeah, that's right. I see your confusion because there is Hulu. Yes, there's and then Hulu, there's Hulu Live without live television, which is definitely not going up ten dollars. That right, would be no. a terrible idea. Yes. No. <laughs> That's Hulu Live is going up $10. Right. It's key. Um, me, in the meanwhile, I wanted to mention something really quick that I saw this week uh, related to a story that we reported a few weeks ago, uh, which is about the T-Mobile services. Apparently, after they announced that T-Mobile, uh, whatever T-Vision. the hell they're calling it, T-Vision, yes. Um, not to be confused with WandaVision, but T-Vision. Um, so I guess a bunch of the uh, owners of those cable networks saw the prices that they were advertising for this thing and we're like, uh, no. And so apparently there's renegotiations happening with those companies in T-Mobile and those prices that they advertised will likely go up because they were like, you can't bundle this with this and have it be this price. We only bundle these here. So that vibe package that they mentioned, which was like entertainment like focus stuff, is probably not going to be what T-Mobile says it's going to be. They're going to have to probably strip that thing completely out and raise the tiers up like five bucks. So that thing, T-Mobile was playing hardball uh, with the prices and being very generous, and it's probably not going to be, it's going to end up being more expensive. I mean, it'll be comparable to everything else that's out there in the market. Exactly. Which was the but the, the that sad part about this is that was the exciting thing about this Hulu or sorry this T-Mobile thing was how cheap it was going to be. Right, but and you had so, to be a T-Mobile customer to get that deal. 
And so, yeah, if they if they uh, can't, you know, get get that deal, though, they can't get those prices down. It's just not going to be as lucrative as it would have been with that price point on it, because ten dollars a month, which was what they were advertising for that vibe package, would be the cheapest in the game. And they're probably not going to be able to pull it off. Uh, Probably not. Okay. Anything else? Uh, No, I guess that means we get to move right on into television thoughts as you look towards the TV again. Any breaking news? Well, yes, we are literally breaking right now because the Minnesota Minnesota Timberwolves have made a selection. Okay. And the number one pick in the draft is Anthony Edwards, shooting guard or or shooting guard (laughs) from Georgia. So exactly what you said was going to happen. Is he going to take it? He's wearing the hat, so uh, I guess probably. so. I guess he's a Timberwolf. Well, there you go. This is not a live show, but we like to pretend it is sometimes. Uh, throw it in the bits. <laughs> we just threw it. We just threw it in the in the podcast shed out back again. All right, it's time for TV thoughts. You've watched some TV this week. Yes, yes, I did. Uh, I watched the Masters this past weekend, or rather, I watched all four rounds of the masters because i had a espn plus which followed live coverage of the golfers and because there were no fans anywhere you could see them perfectly shooting their shots yes and that is golf by the way (laughs) (laughs) just to clarify for people who don't know um but yes so uh, they presented it into a manner where you could just like pop in and just be like oh that happened yeah, well, they would have a rotating coverage of their featured players, which they you could just follow. And then they had their coverage of either the front nine, back nine, or select holes, which is a really great deal for ESPN+. Plus, and I wish they would have advertised that more that you could do yeah. that. Because uh, yeah. even when it switched over to CBS on Sunday, they still ran their coverage on ESPN+, Plus because you're paying for it. Mm-hmm. Also, when that was over, I watched some uh, rugby, some Aust- New Zealand rugby, and that was awesome. <laughs> but golfing masters in fall uh, looked beautiful, and I'm happy there were no fans because I could see all of it. That's true. But as we said, Dustin Johnson shot minus 20 and basically ran away with it um, after the second or third day. Tiger Woods started off hot at minus five. And then immediately cooled off shooting par and par <laughs> in the next two days. He's an old man now. But he started off great <laughs> and people were picking him to win it all. To yeah, repeat. people pick a lot of things. But yeah, uh, good job for uh, Dustin Johnson. DJ, as they called him all throughout. DJ. Uh, well, kind of coronation. He's been doing really well as I've been following more and more golf. Because there's been less and less sports. <laughs> Watch anything else? Uh, yes. Um, we forgot to mention it last week mm-hmm. because it happened last Wednesday, but the CMA Awards, the Country Music Awards, were on. Yes. Um, and it was a crowning night for Kelsey Ballerini. Wait, I think I got that wrong. What? Marin Morris? You watched it, not me. You tell me. Oh, no. I know I watched it. <laughs> you don't remember who won. Uh, it, it is Marin Morris. Marin Morris, yeah. Yes, with her song, uh, The Bones. Yes. Basically winning everything it was nominated for. That is, I feel like, the most recent example of a big crossover uh, country hit. Because you didn't only have the original country version, which was on the record, but then you had an EDM remix that was um, getting a lot of play on pop radio. So I could right, see that. And as conf- long as the bones are good. <laughs> yes. Turns out the bones of that song were good enough to make it work in both formats. And yeah, um, it was a smash. And congratulations. Yeah, it was basically her crowning night of I'm now country superstar. Mm-hmm. Like last year was uh, our favorite. Um, <laughs> Casey. Um, no, I'm glad. Uh, we, I remember we actually uh, talked about that album um, on this podcast. I think we both enjoyed it. So there you mm-hmm. go. 
Uh, but yeah, she won, and then Luke Combs was also the big winner, and then um, Entertainer of the Year, mm-hmm. where no one was entertaining anyone. <laughs> went to yes. Eric Church. <laughs> sure, okay. I mean, I feel like he's earned that just by being Eric Church. Kind of. Um, but I did feel like Miranda Lambert got snubbed everywhere for her album. Yes. Yeah, that's depressing because that album is excellent. Uh, yes. The one she put out last year. Uh, Wild Card. Yeah. Um, but she has she has had her due. Has she? Say. I mean, I'm not saying that she's not still great. I'm just saying that she has been rewarded in the past. So um, Right, but this was such a good album that I figured that, yeah. you know, yeah. put it all to her. But, you know, they went with their Marin Morris and can't always now the country new thing yeah can't always get it right but yeah new hotness still congratulations well still congratulations uh uh, anyways (laughs) one thing that did irk me a lot okay is because big machine records uh, Mm -hmm. runs a lot of these artists yes the name scooter braun thanked a lot Uh uh-huh and I was like, oh, yeah, they have to do that now. They have oh, to do that. That just, uh We'll talk more about Scooter Braun a little later in this podcast. Uh, what else could make you go, uh for Scooter Oh, you'll Braun? see. There's a big, uh coming up. Uh, anyway. Anyways, yeah. What else? Um, that's, those are country music artists those who are, are winning awards. Artists. That's true. Yep. <laughs> um, other TV sh- I watched? Yes. Um. This past week was the season finale for John Oliver's show last week tonight. That right. is officially wrapped and 2020 is officially blown up, according to him. He, he blows up every, every year, I think. <laughs> uh, the last one he did it was 2016, I think. Okay, I remember that. I remember when he did that. Okay. Right. I don't know if he continued that bit since no, I wasn't watching. but No, but... Uh, he, ever since uh, they went out of studio, like after like episode four or three, mm-hmm. um, he's been shooting his stuff from a void or the void, as he's <laughs> called it. Uh-huh. It's a big blank white wall. And it, it's been quite a year, been interesting. I think he's tired of doing Trump stuff. Oh, and okay. hopefully, yeah, like we're done with all that and he can go back to doing obscure. Uh, we can we can wish I can we can wish that, but I don't think we're truly 100 percent done quite yet. Right. Yeah. But we'll he see. has three more years, I think, at HBO. Mm-hmm. He renewed. Yeah, we had that season th- uh, three more season extension recently. I feel right. So you know, now he gets back to what he probably wants to be doing and talk about literally whatever he wants to talk yeah. about again actual issues and yeah, right. the, yeah the issues will not stop there will still be more material for him i'm sure right and probably try and do less domestic issues and hopefully more international issues perhaps but we'll see when the, he returns back in february i think i think it takes january mm-hmm. off and You're right lastly um uh, I haven't talked about it for three weeks. I usually wait for three episodes. Third episode hit, and it continues to be a hit for Disney Plus. I have uh-huh. been talking about The Mandalorian season two. Yes, and yes, that's the Baby Yoda show. <laughs> yeah. that's, I mean, that's probably what most people. Let, let me regale you with a real brief story of uh, from my childhood real quick. Go so you ahead. know how Family Matters at some point, like in, in toward the end of the show, it became, became so much about Urkel yeah. that nobody called it Family Matters. It was just like, oh, I'm going to go home and watch Urkel. Right. I feel like that's probably the case with The Mandalorian. You know, probably many people are probably like, like in their homes watching this show and be like, did you did you watch Baby Yoda yet? Did you save Baby Yoda for me? We I haven't seen it yet. You, told, you didn't watch Baby Yoda without me, right? <laughs> that conversation is happening all over all over the U.S. right now. Oh, I'm sure it is <laughs> because uh, sometimes people only look up when Baby Yoda is on screen. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a personal story now. Um, it's happening to you. Uh, no, I'm watching it fully. No, Other no, people not you. that may be watching it yes. or watching it with me. <laughs> Maybe distracted until Baby Yoda comes on screen. I mean, or we have to remind, look, it's Baby Yoda. 
<laughs> anyway, Baby tell Yoda's me about Baby Yoda. Face. I mean, The Mandalorian season two. Uh, I'm liking what they're doing it right now. They're, it's still very much a Western style set in the Star Wars universe. And they're putting a lot more speed bumps. The episodes seem not necessarily longer, but more like filled with more things that happen and have more consequences. And it just keeps getting raised that it's slowly becoming a bounty hunter of the week type episode. Mm-hmm. Where we have to do a D and D campaign style mission to complete said episode, right? But it's done so well that I don't mind it yet. Okay, that's good. And they, it's following a thread from last year, from last season, where he's trying to find the rest of the Mandalorians and return Baby Yoda to the Jedi. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good story that I am hoping to continue. And I think we announced that it got a third season. I believe I did get renewed, so yes. Yeah. So having fun watching it. And then also, if you haven't seen it, there's also the behind the scenes of The Mandalorian on Disney Plus as well, which I highly suggest checking out. Okay, cool. I have seen zero uh, anything about The Mandalorian. Um, (gasps) Not my thing, but but yeah, I'm glad it's caught on. I'm glad it's people are still liking it. There, I do recall on Twitter there after one of the episodes that recently aired, there was some controversy about some decisions that Baby Yoda made, and I'm just thinking, how could Baby Yoda make decisions? It's a baby. But we don't need to go into spoiler territory here. But oh, it was a matter of life and death. Mm, I see, as it always is. Well, no, it was a matter of Baby Yoda taking life and causing death. (laughs) I'm guessing that he chose to do that. (laughs) All right. Again, we won't talk about spoilers for The Mandalorian here, but that's all my side, off to the side of this phenomenon uh, experience with this thing. So instead, let's move on from talking about thoughts, unless you have anything else on television you want to talk about. Did you watch anything else? No. Um, holiday are... baking shows are happening. Yes. So kind of watching that, but that's not really, that's my trash TV that I like to watch and put on. It's not trash. Oh, it's delicious. Eventually yeah. all of it goes in the trash, but it's delicious. <laughs> that's why you need to go to the dumpsters outside of Food Network. That's where the good stuff is. <laughs> all right. Let's talk yeah, about the next part the of the show. Eat, the, eat it. Mm. Cancellations and renewals, it's time to talk about things. All right, what am I no longer watching? Well, you say that, but I feel like we always have way more renewals than we have cancellations. It's weird, because nobody's shooting right now. Yeah, it's more like- Or everything already got canceled that was supposed to get canceled. (laughs) But yeah, so I think maybe you should start saying, what am I going to continue watching uh, now? Because I feel like, yeah, it shouldn't be cancellations and renewals. It should be renewals and cancellations, if you ask me. All right, what are we still watching? What we're still watching is apparently, unfortunately, um, Emily in Paris, which, by the way, the official Netflix uh, Twitter says is pr- supposed to be pronounced Emily in Paris, so that way Paris rhymes with it Emily. Rhymes. They can eat it, because I don't nope. agree. Um, but yeah, it was... Do they say to... it once in the show like that, <laughs> Emily in Paris? I mean, everybody has a French accent because they are in Paris, so Yes. I'm sure somebody says that in the show, but I didn't watch past 20 minutes past like the pilot. So don't ask me. Okay. Um, It's being renewed for a second season on Netflix. So there'll be more Emily for those of you who can suffer through it. Next up, Nat Geo is bringing back the hot zone for a second season. Not to be confused with the TBS show, the hot ones. It's very different. Fox, though, is bringing back one of media, uh, our Media Boat favorites here, thankfully, after uh, months of speculation about whether or not they were going to bring it back. Lego Masters, coming back for a second season. Continuously being on the bubble since it wrapped this year. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm excited. I really enjoyed that first season. Um, I want to see them do something different with some new competitors. I want to see a different take possibly on maybe 
the format because man that was a weird ass show <laughs> and fyi it's cheap to make it's very cheap to make so i'm sure there'll be even more netflix is also bringing back space force for a second season so i heard mixed things about that show middling things because people yeah. expect it to be the office in space and it wasn't yeah my my uh exposure to it suggested it was more slapsticky kind of oddball kind of show than people wanted it to be so we'll see what season two has to on offer um hulu bringing back woke for a second season and then your cancellations netflix has canceled the order after two seasons and tbs as we mentioned in our television news has canceled conan after 10 seasons so there you go those are your cancellations and renewals as i whack into my microphone i hope that doesn't come out in the recording um it now all we talk come, about all come out in the record now we talk See, about that song that. is so catchy she should have won <laughs> anyway now we talk about deaths uh the sad part of the show and we have uh just a couple this week paul hornum yes that's an rn not an m yes they're very close together uh age 84 a hall of fame football player for the green bay packers was part of the super bowl champion team in 1966 and won the heisman trophy back in 1956 so really great player back in his day yeah we also have bruce swedian age 86 auto audio engineer not only an audio engineer but a rewarded one as he won grammys in 1983 1987 1990 1992 and 1996 that's a lot of grammys uh he won them with michael jackson helping to produce a thriller and then ah. everything else and the rest of his career yeah. hits so that would go. do it if you were paired with michael jackson um uh, your awards are in your future <laughs> turns out all right, that's it for deaths, which means we flip this all over to you and we talk about music. And we always start music with the billboard and we start the billboard with the Hot 100. And your hottest song in the US right now is Mood by 24 Golden. Still. Still featuring Ian Dior. And coming in at number two is a still pissed off Ariana Grande with Positions. <laughs> Can't get that number one slot. Yeah. At number three is I Hope by Gabby Barrett featuring Charlie Puth. At four, Laugh Now, Cry Later by Drake featuring Lil Durk. Mm -hmm. And lastly, at number five, Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Yep. The only thing that changed the, from last week was that I hope moved up a couple spots. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't fret for the weekend, even though he's been around in the top five, <laughs> because it was announced uh, this past week, because I've got to put yes. it in my music news. I'm sure you saw it too. Yes. I thought you were going to put it in, in music news, but... The, the so. other two stories seemed bigger, but yes, uh, the weekend is your Super Bowl halftime show performer. Yes. Uh the Pepsi Halftime Show, presented by Bridgestone, <laughs> presents the weekend. Presents the weekend, yeah. On a Sunday night, on Sunday <laughs> football. <laughs> Still the weekend. Sunday is not the end of the weekend until right. it's over. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they do have a live audience to perform to, or if it's just yeah. a... Pre-taped thing. Pre-taped, I want to say pre-taped. Here's what we can do with a pre-taped thing, and kind of one shot it mm -hmm. with I mean, green screens everywhere it depends on where it is right do we already know the location of the super bowl uh i believe it yes they usually announce it the, yeah. beforehand so we should be able to gauge that like gauge by where it's being held with whether or not they're going to have fans uh let's see this year it is going to be in mercedes-benz Stadium. Okay, which is 
<laughs> uh, yeah, no, sorry. It's going to be in Miami, the Hard Rock Stadium. Ah, so then the answer is probably yes. Probably there probably yes. will be, that will be an attended Super Bowl if I had put some money on it. Um, maybe not to full capacity, but yeah, I would imagine you have fans there in Miami. Well, there have fans changes. in Miami right now. So yes, mm-hmm. there that, will be fans. Saying. Unless something changes, unless the NFL uses different rules for the Super Bowl, but wait, no, sorry, twenty twenty one. Sorry, oh. this past year was in. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, wasn't it in Miami last year? So yes. what is it this year? Uh, still in Florida though, at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay, Florida. Okay, so then yes, still probably, still probably will have some fans in it. Right, I think it was supposed to be at um, L.A., mm-hmm. but they switched it. Um, okay. Because LA has it the following year in 2022. That makes more sense. Yep. All but right. you can actually have fans in California. Yes. Uh, Possibly. <laughs> congratulations uh, to the weekend. Mm-hmm. Go perform on the pirate ship. <laughs> I mean, if he doesn't, I would be very disappointed. You have it. You might as well use you, it. You got to <laughs> use it. You got to use it. It's right there. All right. What about our albums chart? Uh, as for your albums chart, the Billboard 200, there is Ariana Grande on top with Positions. Mm-hmm. Second week at number one. At uh, number two, we have Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon by Pop Smoke. At three, Buck Love by <laughs> the kid Laroy. Yeah, we can say that for an yes. unrated, explicit, tagged podcast. Yes. Uh, but yes, that is a capital, all caps, Leroy. Leroy. Yeah, it's key. Yep. Uh, at four, What You See Is What You Get by Luke Combs. And at five, Welcome to O Block by King Vaughn. And he won't be back in the next week. <laughs> no, I mean, that's what we thought about. 24 Golden featuring Ian Dior, and they still still are here, so who knows, right? Yeah, but that's a single, not an album. <laughs> Especially when we have new releases. Yeah, we do. What's coming out this week? Um, this week, we have B Deluxe Edition by mm-hmm. BTS. Uh, we also have KG. <laughs> that is not Kevin Garnett. No. But King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. It's your favorite band name to say on this podcast. It definitely is. I think that's their <laughs> fifth album, fourth album we've mentioned. <laughs> they are very prolific. <laughs> uh, we also have Lindstrom and Prince Thomas. You uh, missed the uh, the album name there. No, 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 no. That's just the slashes that we use. <laughs> Next to the slashes that we use. Oh, I, 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 three, Th- three, probably three backslashes, backslash, yeah. backslash, backslash. No, it's th- three in italics. Oh, it's italics. <laughs> Who uses italics anymore? I do. Apparently Lindstrom and Pins Thomas <laughs> uses italics. <laughs> we also have Origin of the Alimonies by Lutgeri. Uh, uh, liturgy. Lutgeri. Liturgy. You're 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 switching the placement of the U. I don't know, but see, it sounds like an IKEA furniture if I say it like that. <laughs> Does actually. <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm sitting on my Lutgeri now. L- liturgy. <laughs> yes, liturgy. Uh, we also have good news by Megan the Stallion. Yep. And lastly, never give up by partner. So that Megan the Stallion uh, record, I would not be surprised if that's what dethrones um, Ariana in two weeks. You will be surprised because it's going to be the BTS record. <laughs> <laughs> well, the name of that implies that it's not new, uh, that it's maybe a re-release of something previous. So maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe you just call your album Deluxe Edition. You could. And make people wonder what happened to the first one. <laughs> it's fair. It's like getting right. your kid the third and people wonder what happened to the one and two. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Have a junior. Uh, or, you know, I, I, I by Lindstrom. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Going on to music news. Uh, 
And okay, um, someone's got to pay me because I knew this was going to happen. I should have put a wager on it. <laughs> uh-huh. Who could have seen this coming? Okay. Because when it involves rapper Lil Wayne, yeah, he's you know he's not going to be on his best behavior because he's been charged <laughs> with possession of a firearm and ammunition by the U.S. District Attorney uh, in the Southern District of Florida. If convicted, Dwayne Michael Carter. That's his real name could face up to 10 years in prison because he is a convicted felon. And he's already a convicted felon, so... Right. Quote, the United States Attorney's charges that on or about December 23rd, 2019, in Miami-Dade County, in the Southern District of Florida, (laughs) Dwayne Michael Carter, a.k.a. Lil Wayne, knowingly possessed a firearm and ammunition... (laughs) in affecting interstate and foreign commerce, knowing that he had previously been convicted of a crime punishable by imprisonment for a term exceeding one year in violation of Title 18, U.S. Code, Section 922, (laughs) subparagraph G, subparagraph 1. We get really specific here on the Media Boat Podcast. So he knows... He's been a convicted felon. He was yes. in jail for this, and you're not supposed to have a firearm. No. No, he's not. No. That's why you have <laughs> the guy to your left hold your firearm. <laughs> or the guy to your right hold your firearm. Yeah, I don't you know. Keep your hands clean. Yeah, I don't know what the circumstances were when he got caught, but man, come on, little Wayne. Like, what are you doing? Like, you know the rules. I think he needs new material. You don't need to be armed all the time. Um, this will obviously push back the Kata 6. <laughs> yeah, I want to know what Birdman thinks about this. It. It's like, I told you. No, what if like keeping the Kata 5 hold up is like, <laughs> the only way Birdman could control him to not go back to jail? Maybe. <laughs> And keeping him with something to do, keeping him occupied. Well, his hands are occupied with guns, apparently. <laughs> or at least they were on his body or person. Uh, yeah, you can't possess it. Come on. Come on. Uh, speaking of come on. Speaking of comeuppance. I'm not, no, this isn't comeuppance. This is the opposite of comeuppance. What's the opposite of comeuppance? Mm hmm. <laughs> Come down ins. <laughs> it's a, it's a wrinkle. Uh, I think in 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 the in the career of media boat favorite Taylor Swift. Right. So Taylor Swift and the Masters, not those Masters, but not her those. record Masters. Yeah. Um, right. They were recently sold. You know. Again. But not to Taylor Swift. Again, and not without <laughs> her knowledge. Again, I feel like we're yeah. repeating this somewhere. Again, I know. So yeah, I mean, read the story. <laughs> right, I know. Uh, so Taylor Swift has responded to <laughs> news of the sale of her catalog by Scooter Braun to a private equity company, confirming that a deal went down in October with a firm revealed to her to be Shamrock Holdings. And that, as would be expected, she is deeply unhappy with the second sale of her master recordings without her consent or involvement in a year and a half. Swift additionally declared that she has already embarked on re-recording her entire Big Machine catalog, as previously promised, with the hopes of having fans only listen to the music that she controls. In detailed posts on Twitter, Swift says uh, she was alerted to the October sale by Shamrock Holdings itself, only after the deal had already gone through, when the company reached out with hopes of working with her on the catalog in the future. While Swift maintains that she was open to that, 
she quickly nixed any future collaboration when she learned that Scooter Braun will contractually continue to profit from her work even after the sale. Yeah. So this is a combination so, of three stories. Continuing one of <laughs> uh, Scooter Braun purchasing uh, Big Machine Records with Ithaca Holdings and basically running Taylor Swift out of there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taylor Swift not being able to purchase her masters, which I think the sale went through at north of $300 million. Mm-hmm. But she also basically now has a life vendetta hatred, I will say, <laughs> towards Scooter Braun. Yeah. Uh, and I don't blame her. So one of the other wrinkles to the story that is not in this paragraph, but I had read previously, was that so before she even knew that it had been sold to this Shamrock Holdings, apparently they had put it up for sale with also without notifying her. So even if she wanted to, she couldn't have put it in a bid because the sale was happening without her consent. And so part of the deal to be sold was that they could not disclose that they were purchasing the records. Otherwise, yeah. the deal would have gone through, would not have gone through, <laughs> would have fallen through. Yeah. So it's Scooter Braun, just another another example of Scooter Braun just being like, no, no, I'm gonna bother like letting her know. She doesn't need to know. It's they're mine. They're mine. I can do whatever I want with them. Right. Including trying to make Taylor Swift sign an NDA towards Scooter Braun. Yes. Before yeah. a number was even thrown out that she could have purchased her <laughs> records back at. So the newsiest part of this news is that, well, Taylor's pissed, number one. And number two is that, yes, she is going to fast track these re-records, these uh, re-recordings of her past albums. So yeah, this is quite a big project, as you would imagine. She has, let's see, one, two, three, four, wait, yeah, one, two, three, six, I'll save you trouble, it's four, six albums. five, six, right, because reputation counts. Um, yeah, six records that she needs to re-record. Um, that's a lot of songs. <laughs> right, not to mention her hits. Yeah, not to mention like singles. Not to mention like you know one-off stuff that she did. Not to mention her Christmas record, mm-hmm. <laughs> which came out shortly after her self-titled. Like, there's a lot of stuff to re-record here. But I'm fascinated by this as a project. I can't wait to see her reinterpret because it's not only it's not only a way for her fans to revisit her older work without paying Scooter Braun, which she mentioned specifically here, but it's also an interesting creative pursuit, right? Because she gets to reinterpret these older songs through the lens of modern day Taylor Swift. So also you might hear the lens of hindsight. Right, exactly. So you might see different takes on songs. You might see songs from different perspectives. You might see songs with different instrumentation, like something that had a very hardcore country sound might now be super poppy. Something that was maybe leaning towards pop will go all the way now. There's interesting kind of ways that she can reinterpret her past albums. And she probably has reinterpreted them when Mm -hmm. she's been on tour. Yeah. And sung these songs over and over again that let's change this, let's change that, let's keep this, let's keep that. And so had she's done more tours and sung these songs over and over again that she has perfected the song more now than when she originally recorded. Yeah, it's honestly a fascinating thing to think about. And it's only going to get more fascinating once these started, start coming out. So she said she's still working on them right now. Originally, there was some sort of statement that she had made that she was hoping to have these out by November of 2020. Well, it's November of 2020 now does not sound like they're ready for release, but also curious about how she releases them. Does she do it album by album? Is this like a Star Wars re-release thing, 1997 thing, where we're gonna get a new what, new Taylor Swift re-record every three months? Like that would be pretty rad. Um, so I don't know how she's gonna do it, but I am fascinated by this and all power to her, whatever it takes for her to get ownership of her songs that she wrote. Right, and going back to the deal that Shamrock Holdings made, mm-hmm. um, they had wanted to reach out with Taylor, and as soon as the, the deal went through, they reached out to her saying that they had purchased it. 
and that they were willing to work with her. Right. But but money would still go back to Steve yeah. Braun. No deal. So no deal. Interesting to see if they get sold again. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know anything about these Shamrock people, so. Uh, doesn't sound quite lucky, though. No. Not for Taylor. No. All right. Uh, did you listen to anything this week? I did. But it's not oh really worth noting. Uh, I don't know, is Number it? Number one song. Um, so I decided to do some cleaning and <laughs> trying to get to the holiday spirit. Uh-huh. But I really want to listen to holiday music. Okay. So Andrea Pacelli put out a new album. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's about all I got. Because a lot of it's in Italian. Uh, Andrea <laughs> Petrelli, famous, famous opera singer, um, sings a lot of good stuff. But I didn't really understand most of it, except for the one song he re- he redid Hallelujah. Oh, uh, the to do. song. So that's a good song. And he belts the shit out of it. And I could listen to that thing all holiday season. I won't be surprised if I see that tracking anywhere come December. But Andrea Pacelli, great voice. It's a beautiful album if you like opera music. I don't, but thankfully it was just <laughs> on the background while I was doing other stuff. And it was very soothing. Man, from listening to like any like either pop album or rap album, it's like not like that like different taste that you get from like a different flair. It's like, oh yeah. yeah. This music is also good. You should tell a friend of the show, uh, Mark, about this because I know he's a big fan. Of Andrea Pacelli? Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah, anyway. he has a new album out. Um, if you're in the holiday mood or you're trying to get a holiday mood, check it out. Check or if you just want to listen to some Andrea Pacelli opera. All right. Well, that will do it then for music. Let's move on. Why don't we? Yep. Uh, let's move on to video games uh really short release schedule today everything came out the last week last two weeks so it's we we're done well, with next gen releases for a while now we're just trickling down through the rest of the year yep uh we have football manager 2021 for the mm-hmm. pc is this soccer football or american football i believe that is soccer football manager yes i want to say you're right we also have World of Warcraft, colon, Shadowlands for the PC. That's and expansion? lastly, Hyrule Warriors AOC. <laughs> or Age of Calamity for the yep. Switch. It's a calamity. Uh, I played the demo of this when it was announced. Did you end up playing the demo? No. I Remember, I'm having that SD card issue with my Switch. Right. I've not true. resolved it yet. Okay. Uh, so I played Hyrule Warriors Demo Age of Calamity. I liked it. I yep. don't know if it's enough for me to buy it. Are you um, typically into the, the uh, Dynasty Warriors games? Have you ever been into the Dynasty Warriors games? Not typically, but I did like that you just like beat up on a lot of people. <laughs> That's kind of what they do. Those are those games. Turns yeah. out. Um, I have also been playing uh, the... PS Plus game Shadow of Mordor or Shadow of okay. War. All right. Shadow of War, that's the second one. Right. So it's been so long that I vaguely remember playing it, but also I think I like red boxes, so only played it for like a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think that's what we did. But I'm having fun going through that, and it's free to me because I subscribe to PlayStation Plus. Yeah. But also play a different game, uh, which we'll get to later. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about games we played later. Getting ahead of ourselves. I'm saying that, yeah. Uh, Hyrule uh, Warriors Age of Calamity. Mm-hmm. Pretty good demo. I could see why people would buy this. I could see exactly who it's for. And apparently it has some Legend of Zelda lore that may or may not affect its future. Yes, <laughs> or so it seems like it seems like a lot of this stuff that's in this game will directly lead to a sequel to Breath of the Wild. Uh, and also uh, one thing to add about this demo is that 
progress in the demo will carry on to the, free, uh, the full game. So those who are, are planning on buying this, uh, get the demo anyway, because uh, what you do in the demo will still affect what you have when you buy it. So there you go. But let's talk about actual video game news. Let's talk about video game news. And we start uh, going to the Great White North in Canada, specifically Montreal. Yes. As the police there evacuated the offices of video game developer Ubisoft Montreal on Friday afternoon in response to a 911 call about a hostage situation that was later confirmed to be a hoax. Yeah. The police, quote, the police operation in connection with a hostage-taking call is over, uh, read a tweet uh, written by the Montreal Police Department. The investigation, however, has not concluded. Police are looking into the source of the 911 call. Ubisoft Montreal took to Twitter following the event to express their gratitude to the police's quick and professional response and for the support and kind words the company received. Quote, following the reports of an incident in the studio earlier today, November 13th, Friday the 13th, mm -hmm. we are relieved to confirm that all of our team members in Ubisoft Montreal are safe and have been evacuated from the premises. We commend the strength and solidarity of all of our team members in this complex and stressful situation. We are grateful for the prompt response of the police and local authorities. We will continue to provide our teams with all the necessary support to cope with this traumatic event. Yeah. End quote. So, so who, who calls 911? Who tries to swat people? It's people? still unclear uh, who is responsible for the call. Um, I'm sure that they will have um, punishment in line for that person in some form. Um, but yeah, this is the first example that we have of swatting, which if you're not familiar is a term for basically anybody who calls another, calls the police on an individual, uh, reports something very serious that is definitely not happening. And it's called swatting because they could potentially send the SWAT team over to someone's house to just burst in um, in case there is actually a hostage situation. So, you know, in the past, we've heard this happening to your average person in a home, but this is the first we've heard on this scale where they did it to a video game development office. Uh, so it's a really awful precedent to set. And the fact that it worked, I'm using quotes here, but like it was, it, it was effective at like it tricking people into thinking. Evacuate the building. Yeah. That the, the, in fact, when news outlets first started reporting this, people were using Twitter reactions and people initially did believe that there was really a hostage situation because that's what the police were reporting at the time because that's had been the call. So this is kind of, I guess, a lesson in two parts. One, this is why major news outlets should not report on uh, immediate Twitter reaction and should wait until something develops because we definitely proved that that's a problem this week. And uh, two is that there needs to be more work done with with the idea of false uh, false calls to the police on this scale because this is really horrifying, really scary. Well, yeah, I mean, because you would that would circulate back to the building and you have people like freaking out that something yeah. is actually happening. Uh, the story did go on. I don't have this part on the on the sheet here, but the story did go on to mention that. There wasn't a whole lot of people in the office. It is important to note that Ubisoft Montreal is still mostly in a work from home situation right now because of the COVID-19 pandemic, though they are allowing certain people to go into the office when needed. So this wasn't, thankfully, a full office full of all of their employees. It was a smattering of employees uh, on different floors that were evacuated. So. Not as bad as it could have been potentially, but still, um, whoever's out there doing this kind of shit, mm, come on, come on, you know better. Can't they just like call the Trump tip line and spam them with calls? <laughs> ah, if only. I thought that was a thing they were doing. 
anyways, moving on to our second story in video games. Yes. It's award season. It broke. This broke today. If you haven't been talk, thinking about your game of the year, start thinking about it. Right. And we have a, quite a list to choose from as the Game Awards, which will be live streamed on December 10th, has unveiled the list of games nominated for categories like Best Game Direction, Best Narrative, Best Art Direction, and the much-coveted Game of the Year. The Goat Yay. Uh, Naughty Dogs, <laughs> The Last of Us Part Two, leads the pack with 10 awards, including a spot on the Game of the Year list, much to everyone's chagrin. I mean... It still did pretty well. There's still plenty of outlets that gave it high scores. Let's not pretend that people did not like the <laughs> did not like uh, the Last of Us Part Two. I know you liked it, so oh yeah, I like so, no, the story they were trying to tell there. Not it's there for a reason, but it's definitely there for a reason. Other contenders for uh, the Game of the Year award include Animal Crossing: New Horizons, yep, with three nominations. Doom Eternal with four nominations, Final Fantasy VII Remake with six nominations, Ghost of Tsushima with seven nominations, and Media Book Favorite Hades <laughs> with eight nominations. Yes. Four of the five aforementioned games also land on the Best Game Direction list alongside Half Life Alex. Additionally, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, and The Last of Us Part II appear on the best narrative list next to 13 Sentinels, colon, Aegis Rim. The same four games, uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, and The Last of Us Part II, also compete for the Best Art Direction Award against Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yeah, so... I think there's two major takeaways uh, from this. The first is, hell yeah, Hades, which is storming the competition. Mm -hmm. Supergiants games have never gone this high in these uh, Game Awards nominations, so it's great to see them competing this year. Of course, on the back of a very, very good game uh, that we've both played and enjoyed here. The other story, though, is people are um, scratching their heads at the 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 the. Um, the presence of Doom Eternal in the Game of the Year category. A lot of people saying that that should have been Half-Life Alex's uh, place and are wondering why a game that got kind of middling reviews overall in critical reception is nominated here. Right. And I'm also not seeing a whole lot of VR games speaking of Half-Life Alex. No, um, it was kind of a weaker year for VR. I think that the VR peak is mostly over. Um, so yeah, this is kind of like the leftovers, but ultimately though, with Doom Eternal, with Doom Eternal being the exception here, uh, this is a pretty strong game of the year list. I think I, I can see a placement for all of these games. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not your game of the year, you I think ultimately, for it. I think though, ultimately, I think what's going to, this is going to come down to, and I think a lot of people's minds, um, and I think a lot of other media outlets as well, it's going to be a, Hades versus Last of Us Part Two fight. I think it might even be a Hades versus Last of Us Part Two fight on this very podcast's awards. Um, I think that they're two very strong contenders that have very strong fan bases that are coming two from the very different yes, art styles that are, are coming from the exact and... opposite, like not only in tone but also in like game design philosophy. Mm -hmm. So it'll be very interesting to see where people land on these. But we will find out on December 10th. Sure will. And as we approach December 10th, which is just a month away, we also have to figure out what our game of the year is. We'll get and there when we get there. We have some thoughts on possible game of the years. Wow. OK, you're coming out swinging here. Uh, do you want to go first then, if you're all hot to talk about your game? Oh, no, go ahead. Go first. <laughs> I, mean, I won't take very uh, take very long with mine. Uh, so I mentioned last week that um, I didn't have a chance to jump on Destiny 2's new expansion, Beyond Light. But this week, 
I did. So for those of you who are Game Pass uh, subscribers on the Xbox, you can jump into this right now. Beyond Light is included in the Game Pass version of Destiny 2. If you're on PC though, it's $40, but I ended up paying it because I was like, this is where I play this game. This is where it runs best. Um, so I'm going to stick with the PC version of the game. So, so it got I played you some... to go back to Destiny 2. Yes, and I'm glad I did. Uh, this seems like a pretty cool expansion. Um, so a lot of the planets that existed are cut for this. Um, in fact, the overall size of the game has also gone down because of that. And you're pretty much left with uh, only, hand, only a handful of locations that you can uh, deal with. The new planet, Europa, is uh, where most of the, the new campaign takes place. And it's a snow world. So think Hoth, and you'll get an idea of what the area that you're traversing in this expansion mostly looks like. A classic snow world. Exactly. So it's, it looks beautiful. In fact, it looks so beautiful that whatever new graphic um, elements that they added in this expansion actually started uh, bringing me below 60 frames uh, on my graphics card. So I crank things down, not down that far, only like from very high to high. And now it runs fine. It still looks really great. So I didn't have to go that far down for it to start running at 60 again. But that being said, I mean, it's probably going to look really, really cool on those new consoles. So if you're playing Destiny 2 on a Series X, this is the time to jump in. Um, but yeah, uh, it's a pretty cool expansion. I'm about halfway through, I believe, the campaign right now. It's a pretty significantly sized campaign. Uh, the, it seems like there's easily more missions here than there was in the last expansion, um, Shadowfall. Shadowfall? That sounds right. That might be the name of it. Anyway. <laughs> it is. Godfall is the... Yeah, Godfall's the, yeah, the other game. Um, so yeah, I'm enjoying what I... Uh, uh, what I've been playing of it so far, uh, but I haven't finished it yet. I'll, I'm not a Destiny 2 lore guy, so I can't really tell you much about what's happening um, in the story of Destiny, but, uh, it, but it's been a lot of fun, and I'm excited to see where it goes. All right, sounds good. Now for my game of the year. <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Okay, I'm not going to get ahead This is a debate head. that we will have another day. So... Game of the year may be too strong. Game of the decade? Okay, all right. Oh, uh, we're hmm. No, no, that doesn't. Sound decade good. just started, so. Game of the coma patient. <laughs> I think that's a better one. Game of how the about, coma patient for. How about game of the pandemic? Let's say you. Do you want to say that? No, I would go with game of the coma patient because. Okay. If you like rhythm games but you have not played a single Kingdom Hearts game, mm -hmm. is this the game for you? <laughs> Wait, are you saying that this is going to tell me everything about the Kingdom Hearts series? Yes. Wow. I'm saying that they are milking this story <laughs> for all it's worth because not only did we play it for PS2 when it came out, not only did we play the HD remix for, <laughs> P for PS3, not only did we play the 1.5 and 2.5 remix for ps4 uh, but they want you to to go through this whole story again from the beginning for melody of memory and is it worth it your mileage may vary <laughs> okay so you you're coming from an interesting perspective here because you're not only a fan of kingdom hearts but you're also a fan of rhythm games so yes. what's your what's your take on kingdom hearts melody of memory you have to be a fan of rhythm games and you kind of need to be a fan of rhythm games in general mm -hmm. to be a fan of this game. Because I can see people paying $60 for it, which does feel like a steep price <laughs> if you're not ready for a rhythm game. Mm, okay. And you're just paying the $60 because it's a Kingdom Hearts game. Uh, because the amount of new stuff you get in this thing totals maybe about 30 minutes from start to finish to beat okay. the game is about anywhere between seven and 10 hours. Okay. It's a short story game. But 
that's not what they marketed this thing as. And so, that's not why yeah. you're going to buy this game. Right, exactly. It you're buying like, it for the replayability. You're buying it to yeah. play the songs over and over again. For, from my perspective, yeah, I never... I never expected this thing to add anything to the Kingdom Hearts myth mythos. Like my perspective on this thing was it's a rhythm game that is going to retell a lot of elements of Kingdom Hearts with a lot of the music that you loved. Not just a lot of the elements, literally every oh. single game. And that is what I didn't anticipate. I thought this was going to be a greatest hits, you know, uh, and this, uh, it's a you're saying this is more like a play-by-play. -play. It is a play-by-play. -play. It's the greatest hits of the specific titles. Minus the stuff you can't get um, licensing mm -hmm. for. <laughs> yeah, you're not getting it under the sea in here. Oh, no, you which... are. What? You're not getting really? Tarzan, though. But you're getting under the sea. Weird. Okay, so there are you're some Disney songs Halloween. in this? You're not getting He's a Pirate. Wait, okay, hold on. So you are getting some Disney songs in this? Yes. I did not anticipate that. Getting, I thought this like, was just going to be the Kingdom Hearts stuff. Wow, I'm they're surprised getting the, actually. He, they're getting uh, the Mickey Mouse March hmm. from Disney Castle. You're also getting the uh, Timeless River theme. But yeah, there's certain songs on there um, that's listed that if you stream, you will be banned. <laughs> or <laughs> like the DLCA with Twitter. I mean, or with Twitch. Yeah, we've talked about the Twitch music regulations thing. Somebody pointed out on Twitter how funny it was that the all the, the emails for the Twitch stuff about the uh, music licensing came out the week between Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory and Fuser. And Fuser. Two very heavy, uh, two games that use very heavily use licensed music. <laughs> yep. Which I think is hilarious. Yeah. So anyways, uh, this game immediately throws you into a scenario of button mashing and uh, yeah. not button mashing but a uh, rhythm game rhythm game yeah without any tutorial before you get to the tutorial it just throws you right into it and it does its opening credits which also gets you your basic story through kingdom hearts and then it starts you off in chron in release order going through kingdom hearts one chain of memories kingdom hearts two birth by sleep coded days mm -hmm. Dream Drop Distance, 2.8, and then Kingdom Hearts 3. Okay. And you get, I think, a total of full 300? Just over 300 different variations of songs. Wow. Um, that's including, uh, like, the different difficulty replays. So you get a lot of songs to replay and a lot of songs to master. Sounds like it. But like as for the actual story content, it's short, it's 10 hours. If you're getting it for a story, not for you. You're getting it for a rhythm game. You're getting it for the music. And they're, this is basically their version of Kingdom Hearts World Orchestra Tour in video game rhythm format. <laughs> yeah. So people who like going to those concerts, who have paid for it, who know about them, who mm -hmm. buy those albums, who want the music, you get the music. So, so yeah, let it goes in here too. <laughs> so the, act <laughs> the actual um the actual uh the rhythm game part of it is it fun to play it does it do anything interesting with the rhythm game format uh so it's different because unlike say guitar hero or rock band where you have an actual instrument and five yeah five different buttons to press it's three mm-hmm uh, your attack button and your two shoulder buttons. At very, various times, like in the demo, you either attack it once, twice, or all three. Okay. My problem with it is the jumping and gliding part. Okay. Is it like a hold I kind of pattern? Very difficult with jumping precisely and yeah. then jumping the glide while also attacking. Oh. And sometimes I miss it and it breaks my combo. I was like, ah, shit, fuck, goddamn, I gotta start over again. <laughs> So it's another one of those trial by error things. Like once you've seen it a few times, you'll expect more what you're doing with the button inputs. Yeah. It'll get easier as you go. Right. And I'm playing it on the Switch. So okay. it's different from because I'm usually playing Kingdom Hearts with the PlayStation controller. 
the player on yeah. Switch is different. But I mainly did that so that way I can do two player single player. Right. Because it comes with two controllers for the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> and I can just play with myself instead of trying to figure out claw hand how to do a kingdom a two PlayStation controllers. Right. And God forbid making friends in a pandemic. You're not gonna do that. So well see <laughs> this is the thing that I'm having a, a, a bug with. Okay. Okay. There is an online versus mode where you can play against people, but it's solely ranked and random to where you don't play against friends. Okay. There's no there's no way you can party up and do like a friend nope. match. No. Nope. Weird. Yeah. Huh. It's weird. It's kind of sucks. Yeah, that's bad. Yeah. Like, you figure at least, like, your friends can do co-op. Uh, Not great. No. <laughs> Couch co-op. Uh -huh. But uh, you have, it tries to do things with synthesizing, because God forbid we don't have a synthesizing element in a Kingdom Hearts game. <laughs> Uh, and a lot of it is mainly you play the songs for earning collectibles to fill out the sheets that you already have. Mm -hmm. Trying to fill out the index, trying to get to 100%. Yeah, which I'm sure you're going for because you're Mr. 100% over there. Yeah, but also <laughs> I, like, I like playing those rhythm game songs yeah. over and over again. Except when it... <sighs> so there's three difficulties. You're a beginner, standard, and proud. There's not going to be, if they ever do an update, I don't see why they would add a critical mode because performer mode is basically your critical mode and <laughs> I suck hard at it. It adds directional buttons, directional inputs, and certain button presses to where if you're not paying attention, you will miss it and it will break your combo and as soon as you lose a combo, it's done. It's mm. done for. And you can just get beat up and slashed up. And yeah, it's just like, oh, that's it. You're just going to die right here, right now. Because unlike other rhythm games where you can try and reset yourself and get back into a streak, mm -hmm. it's really hard to do it on performer mode in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. You can do it in the other like basic standard proud. But goddamn performer mode is just kicking my ass. And I was like kind of sworn off until I kind of master the songs first before yeah. adding extra uh, button inputs. Yeah, just get to it when you've had some more practice. You kind of get up there to that skill level. Yeah. But that, that's good. Sounds good. Sounds like a good game. I wouldn't call it game of the year, game of the decade, but I don't no, know. No, it's not. No, it's not. That's <laughs> just me hyping it up. It's definitely not. But uh, fair yeah. enough. It's it's a Kingdom Hearts game. Like I said, it's if y'all either like rhythm games, the Kingdom Hearts music, it's to really appreciate this kind of game. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're gonna beat it in like ten minutes and may may never touch it again, and you'll feel like a wasted sixty dollars. <laughs> but what? with that, that's all I got. All right. Anything? Uh, no, besides Destiny, I jumped back into Hades real quick. Um, I beat the third. I did a third uh, escape. Um, I did it with the spear this time. So an escape attempt in Hades uh, with the spear. So yeah, I've done one with the um, shield, one with the bow, and one with the spear now. I'm trying to do it with the sword, and oh my god, I can't do it. Oh, like I said, watch that uh, dev speed run. Yeah. of this just the sword with nothing yeah. and you'll feel incompetent <laughs> no no i already feel incompetent i did three in a row last night trying to win trying to beat it with the sword and i just couldn't do it i even did a sort one of the first sword upgrade just to see if that would help and now um so yeah i might jump back and do it try to do it again with the bow just because i miss using the bow it was my favorite and now i feel like since i have such an urge to only do the weapons i haven't beaten it on I've been ignoring the ones I like, so we'll see. But uh, I do intend on trying to finish that before we have Game of the Year talks. But we'll see. We like trying to finish all the weapons, or at least get ten clears, uh, because that's when credits roll. So okay. I want to get, I want to beat, the, I want to finish Hades. 
which I don't think you ever actually do, but I want to finish it. No one ever finishes it. <laughs> all right. No, but that's all I've, that's the only thing that I've been playing. So, all right. Um, okay. Then I think we are done here. Let's wrap it up. I think what so. Thank you for joining us for the Media Boat Podcast this week. If you want to see more of us, you can on YouTube search Media Boat Podcast to find our YouTube channel. And you can find archives of our older episodes of this episode that's happening right now and new episodes as they air after they air every Wednesday night. You can also listen to us in audio form if you'd rather listen to an audio version of this podcast. We're on podcast services such as Apple Podcasts, Amazon, Spotify, uh, Google Play, uh, anywhere that you get your podcast, likely we are there. So search Media Boat Podcast to find our show. You can also follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at Media Boat Cast. On Facebook, just search Media Boat Podcast and you'll find us. Uh, like and comment on our page, whatever you want to do. You can also find us or ask us questions by emailing us at mediaboatpodcast at gmail.com. That's mediaboatpodcast at gmail.com. So with that, we'll see you next week with another episode of the Media Boat Podcast. We'll be back more next week. I may check out that Queen's Gambit show on Netflix that people seem to be talking about everywhere. Yeah. Uh, we'll have more <clears throat> thoughts. I mean, we're probably going to listen to some music. Probably, maybe, Probably who knows? Stallion. Who can say? Uh, but yeah, we'll be back with all that and more next week. Yep, and we'll, okay, yep. see you next week. That's it, bye. next week, uh, bye.